and then there's War Boss, and then there's Farseer, Farseer. and then there's Space Skeleton, and Bug, <laughs> That's <amazing>. and Fish. <laughs> That's- yep. to forge the narrative hey everybody welcome to forge the narrative my name is paul your host i'm joined tonight by red powell hello and adam camilleri hello man how about that last episode oh man i was a salty boy when you, uh, when i wasn't included in the interview and i'm like yeah i, I would have contributed absolutely nothing <laughs> just stand back and let the great man roll next time maybe did, we, maybe man. we can get him to come on again thanks next, next time oh well welcome to anyone who is just joining us or joining us from last week or returning thank you everybody for listening i mean this is kind of like a slow 40k week but there's been a lot that's been mentioned in our like from games workshop in our community and everything just in the last few days so for uh, sure yeah and g-dub's pumping then they might be slow on the 40k front but aos war cry what was the other one it's cursed, cursed city, city just got announced cursed city. Yeah. oh the aesthetic of those models is very exciting. It's it is. a whole new horizon. I, I love it. I mean, uh, you know, no, no secret that I liked the um, Silver Tower and Blackstone Fortress. And I like those games because they're just really good ways for you to expose people who they may not give a hill of beans about a, a large scale 40K. But the models are very captivating and cool. And you can sit down and have an evening of kind of engagement, which is, I think, like the true definition of entertainment. Well, and you can get the app and it has a whole bunch of characters outside of just the characters that are in the game itself. And so, like, you could, I mean, you can run, like, Silver Tower with a bunch of corn characters. It's, like, awesome. Oh, yeah, like That's a pretty mini role-playing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. So we saw, uh, spoilers for anyone who's, not who's reading the Marnius Calgar comics, but by the time you've heard this, you've probably seen the picture. So spoiler, spoiler warning. Picture. Yep. If you don't want any spoilers at all, skip forward about two minutes, maybe three, three minutes. Um, we'll try to wrap it up in then. But uh, spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. So Marnius rips the head off Lord of Skulls, <laughs> and everyone's losing their minds. <laughs> I mean, doesn't isn't that kind of fair? It, look, I could see how. Okay, this is what I like is that. Uh, we can either like it's either doesn't phase us or we're offended because because we don't like the ultramarines or we do like <laughs> lord of skulls but... i i only like it that it's too good a representation of what actually happens in the game at the moment and people are people are unhappy that's that's uh, what i was gonna bring up is that don't we kit out our captains to go to and smash, beat down lords of war yeah. But, okay, come on, guys. Can Marnius do it? Uh, depends how well he rolls four up in vulnerable saves. What, what you've seen is right off the, right off, off to the side of that is, you know, Tigerius has buffed him up. I was going to say, where's the apothecary? That's how we know it's the real game. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's... <laughs> or, I mean, this uh, also plays into my talk last time. I mean, the other ten Ultramarine captains are around somewhere. Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. They're all hyping him up, shield well, squadding him. So one of the neatest, yeah, the neatest things about 40K, though, is that th- we create these heroes, or the, the world, the lore creates these heroes, and then they throw them into impossible odds. I mean, like, for a, a longest time, characters would go, and if they beat down an avatar, you knew they were, you know, really cool. Yeah. Like, full group. The avatar was the measuring stick. Yeah. yeah. If you could beat an avatar, you were legit. Yeah. So this is stuff. I mean, it's just... And again, we talk, kind of talked about it on the last show. There's nothing's too big for 40K. Heck, mm. that thing could just be parked and there could be some grots hiding in there about to convert it well, to an orc thing. I was about to say, we haven't seen the rest of the panel. It could it could already be like off the tracks, lying on its side in a scrap heap, and he's just making an example of something that's already wrecked or yeah. I would say but, I don't know, mind it. In this in the have, confines of a comic, I'm cool with it. And given the chance to jump to a conclusion, there's a lot of jumping. Yeah. Oh psh. come on. We're playing about space <laughs> space soldiers. And and really the long and the short of it is nothing that like these things don't affect your enjoyment of moving around your plastic toy soldiers. So. Absolutely not. It's fine. Yeah, absolutely not. I mean, the, the, the suspension of disbelief should have ended a long time ago when you pick up a Mount Manius Cal, when you pick up a 40k comic book. <laughs> just, yeah, it, you just, yeah, yeah. It well, should be long about the door. You should have left it at the door upon I mean, purchase. And to be fair, as a true adherent to corn, um, I mean, was blood spilled? Check. 
Yeah, winning. Did someone lose their head? Check. Kind of just checked all the boxes right there. So everybody's mm-hmm. happy. So if we, so, t- staying true to the two minute spoiler warning, we got to change topics for us here. But speaking of crossovers, we also saw announced today that Games Workshop Warhammer 40k. I don't know if it's work, but Lord of the Rings to be doing a crossover with Magic the Gathering. Yeah, that is actually quite exciting. Um, do you guys know of many? 40k players who haven't played magic at some point i don't know i mean yeah it's it's definitely well i mean magic's one of those things just like 40k i mean i know i I, I, 40k has definitely been around longer than magic but i mean Mm. magic is just one of those pervasive hobbies as well you know in the the tabletop stuff that it's definitely out there and i mean have you played magic paul oh yeah no it's magic is a phenom right i mean people yeah yeah. it's it's one of those i mean like 40k it has now has the history behind it to where there's this this is punk band that I like. Uh, and one of their albums is, I, I think my older brother used to listen to Lagwagon. <laughs> okay. And, but it's like that. We all either, we've either done it, we dabbled in it for a while and we've quit and come back to it. Or we know somebody who has, or our older, our older sibling has done 40 K or uh, magic and that kind of stuff. Sure. Adam, have you played magic? Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> me too. Absolutely. I mean, that's the thing. It's like at some point I, I, we picked it up. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. I admit I haven't played it anytime recently. I mean, you know, you got 40 K, you got all this other stuff going on. There's quite a bit, but you tell me that I could make a commander deck with a 40 K commander and a bunch of 40 K cards. I mean, I might go back yeah. to it. But people have an opinion about this though. And I, Okay. I can't tell them that they're that they're wrong. I mean, there there are certain things that like Magic has now. The lore is expansive because they do these planes, and so the style and the theme and the characters they can change. But you know, there is this backdrop. There's a there's a narrative behind the game. I don't think it's as deep and as rich as as Warhammer 40k, but it, it exists and and people or as it. coherent. Yeah. Well, yeah, because. <laughs> You know they've they've done the same thing. They've kind of patched things together over over time. Yeah, they, they did a thing across over the Walking Dead, and with unique effects on cards and of course rules about how you can use those cards. And now this is I don't know if this is the this the second time, but it's certainly rare that they're they're doing another crossover with another property that people are incredibly passionate about, and it's going to introduce some unique effects in the cards. So they're okay. I don't know what they're going to introduce, but I can just imagine that there will be some unique effects on the cards in similar way that the walking dead had stuff. So mm. there's lots of warning signs here for people to be critical of. Mm. I'm, I don't really, so I suppose I don't really care about the game itself. I'm just keen to see the artwork. I'm just, I just love seeing new takes on 40 K artwork from different designers and different guys. And I think it's always, a, always a good time to see a different interpretation of something. Man, you know, it's going to be those, 10 ultramarine captains that red keeps talking about (laughs) (laughs) thanks no but hey think if they make let's take all the characters let's say from mm, you know eighth edition of on or whatever you could i i have no doubt it's out there you could do that you could easily have a deck with all 10 plus one primaris captain uh you know all in there well two primaris captains now three once we get kato and then you could have rg in there and you could also throw a rain in there with no qualms so there's nothing preventing it that's hilarious <laughs> Just saying. Uh, had one buddy say, wouldn't it be cool if they did like a secret layer with the Primarchs? You know, like, oh, there's Primarch cards. I mean, yes, that would be cool, but that that's probably sick. not going to happen. We're going to get nine Ultramarines. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But so, like, I mean, right now, the game is quite well set up to be adapted into something, you know, like whether, whether it should or shouldn't is, is kind of up for debate. But I mean, like, one mana for a, you know, a 1 1 Guardsman, cool. With, I don't know. <laughs> well, and. Oh, I want 40k mana. But That'll be cool. I, yeah, okay, you know, I, cool. but I think we're kind of like does these these cards are not going to be in what they call the standard play. So you're, you're like it's not going to disrupt the the casual magic. This is going to be for collectors and it's just another collector thing which I'm really cool with. Like I I want it as someone who collects both of these things. There's no way I'm not buying this. Could you imagine Chaos God Manners, like Green Mana <laughs> Garden of Nurgle? Sorry, I just completely derailed this because I just went on a tangent in my brain. And... <laughs> Sorry. No, but red, I, I don't, I don't you know, mind. In corn, skull, red with, you know, red mana with a skull thrown on it. Yeah. Now we're talking. Yeah. yeah. We're talking. I mean, I, I hope, for, I mean, I want to get these. I want to look at them. I don't, you know, well, I want to tap two red uh, and a gold and attack with Dante. That's what I. <laughs> yeah. So red, obviously, with your name, you play what? <laughs> I mean, you play, you play yeah. blue, yeah. You'd be a blue control deck. 
Uh, I've never, you know, I've never really been a big fan. I I do like, I totally understand the the allure of the blue decks and everything. I mean, just watching someone else's deck go away. (laughs) Yeah, man. But yeah, I I, I mean, and and to be fair, I haven't played in a long time. You know what I I really liked, which you could probably do now with Tyranids is... um, I used to like the old sliver deck, man. Yeah, I like those oh, combos. Yeah. Cool. Tribal, tribal combo type stuff. Yeah, it was, it was yeah, fun. I thought that was cool. Is it, was it the Cavus as well? I don't know. Uh, if that was a, that was definitely a thing, right? But no, are they I a tribe? Slivers. Yeah, they were. They were, yeah. They, and they were like, but they were mul- They were typically kind of like the slivers. They were very much like multi mana kind of deal. Mm. Like it's elves or nothing. Oh, oh man, the green elf decks. One of those, <laughs> yeah. I mean, vampires are a big deal for a little bit too, yeah, you know, but think of like, think of like, uh, someone else I was talking to about it mentioned, um, you know, like planeswalker level, um, like main or, or legendary character kind of things. Silent you King. Know? Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah, planeswalker. Exactly. That's cool. That would be neat. Like I, 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 if we get a whole set, that'd be really cool. If it's one or two commander decks or just two versus packs. I'm also well, think cool if they, I mean, I, I don't know if Wizards of the Coast has realized the like the treasure trove they have with this. That I mean, you could make several series as you just keep adding, mm. to go running with the factions and stuff. I mean, you could you it could go crazy. Question for for you for you guys: um, Is this is it an urban legend or did was you know Warcraft from Blizzard? Did uh, urban legend says that they approached J Dub to make. Warcraft was going to be Warhammer and it was just going to be a Warhammer RTS and that they were turned down by g because they didn't want their stuff adapted at that time. Is that urban legend or is that that actually happened? Man, that happened before the internet, so I don't know. It did, exactly right. So <laughs> it hard to verify. Before, yeah, if it happened before the internet, did it actually happen? Yeah. Look, I, I don't I don't mind these crossovers, especially when they're just, I mean, you can, it's not a cash grab. It's it's a collectible thing that, that people want. So like no one's compelled. There is a certain amount. This is also another thing to be critical of is the whole fear of missing out. Like this is a chase set kind of thing. And mm. do you know, I mean, look, it's, it's still not bad. It doesn't affect, this doesn't affect how we play with our plastic toys. So, no, nah, not at all. Yeah, I mean, I happen and to I, want it. I happen to be excited about it, but I can also see the other side how people would be critical of this uh, from either well, company. Uh, people who are critical, just I don't know. I, I I guess I'm not a massive fan of. I don't know if I'm gonna I'm gonna wait and see what it is before I buy it because I don't have a clear understanding of what they're producing right now. But uh, at the same time, I'm not gonna sit here and gatekeep like good business good business plans from an organization I respect. Yeah, well, like, that, actually, both things. It's be like if we got yeah. contacted by another organization that we respected to collaborate. Like, why wouldn't we do yeah. it? And so, right. Yeah, well, why, and that's, you got to give something in in credit to uh, GW. With I mean, think of over the last few years, all the different. You know, there's a Necromunda game now. There's there's a Battlefleet Gothic. Oh, uh, you know, all Ti- they're, Titanicus they're, is back. Yeah, their their IP. They've allowed. I'm not going to say they farmed their IP out, but I, I was talking to another uh a good friend that about how they've just allowed their ip to go just run out yeah. there they've been handed out to people and if it makes money and it works like it works if it doesn't like oh well then, then you never hear about that use. mobile game again <laughs> exactly and you just keep going like it just doesn't stop there i think it's amazing that the we saw this transition i think as seventh edition really ramped up at the end there with you know the rapid release the the gathering storm and everything Mm -hmm. and you really saw the ip just take off in all these different directions i mean you know for a while before that i'd say fantasy flight games had a lot with the ip you know was making all those different board games and everything but after that and then where they went from there i mean i mean right now you know on steam like you can get gladius or whatever and it's like a, a civilization almost like tactics game of um uh, you know of the armies from 40k and whatnot is i mean it's just there's tons of stuff out there that that it, mm. it's so for them to do a crossover with magic I, I can't say that i'm i'm not surprised maybe surprised it, it took this long to get to this point but i'm i'm interested to see where it goes for sure yeah, yeah me, me too, too. I, yeah. i'm more keen on it than not for sure yeah i mean i agree i, I, mean, I definitely want to see it and if it becomes something you know, big than mm. like I'd, I'll play. I, I would, I would, I would play the heck out of a magic style 40 K card game <laughs> um, without, with how no do shame. you feel about, <laughs> how'd you guys, so the topic change, if we're ready for it. Oh yeah. How yeah, do you feel about it. the, the Rus Viking uh, ogre vampire aesthetic? Uh, I'm, <laughs> You talking about from Curse City? From Curse City, I'm like, that is. Where did they? What dartboard did they throw darts at to get that guy? Because he's phenomenal. Yeah, I want his outfit. Like, can I? Can I cosplay as this guy? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, he's a he's a like a Russian or a Rus uh, aesthetic ogre 
vampire. And I'm just like, wow, that's that's crazy. I want to hear this guy's backstory. <laughs> I had it had well that's that's the thing you can do with like innovative model design and stuff. You can be like, hey, I actually want to know more about this character. How did how does he exist? Where does he come from? You know, all and that you stuff. Get to be it's, that it's guy. Cool. Yeah, and you get to crush. Hopefully, yeah. Now this, these have been. I mean, the scenarios that you go through are actually pretty balanced. Like they're 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 not built to completely overwhelm you, but you have to still play through them. And uh, like I don't know if you played any of the Silver Tower or Blackstone. Uh, yeah, I played. I played the. I haven't played any Blackstone, but I played a lot of Silver Tower when it came out. Yeah, I like it. I mean, this, the style is that it's it's um it's challenging where you still you do have to think through it and it's kind of coordinate with your buddies kind of thing. Mm. But I, I do. Uh, I, I mean, yeah. I mean, I can't imagine it's not going to be the same mechanic or similar mechanic anyway. Yeah, I think it's I think it's really cool. And the the new swathe of models that came out with it, uh, they're all amazing. I've only got one gripe, if we're allowed to talk about gripes. Yep. <laughs> um, you the, are. You are, Adam. You're allowed to. I am? Oh, thanks, guys. Pr- a place of privilege. The <laughs> only models, the only models, I guess, didn't do it for me were the zombies with the the tombstones on their heads. That's so weird. So, so, okay. I felt the same way. And so on Twitter, somebody pointed out the correlations between the gravestones and the zombies themselves. Like one of them mm-hmm. is clearly, you know, a, like a loved one or was married or whatever. Uh, there's uh, ones, you know, eating some, you know, there's, there's these, um, the, it's very narrative, you know, with uh, with the way that the tombstone and then the zombie itself, and that makes me like them a little bit more. Oh, okay. So what you're saying is that because it's a themed little, every model has a bit of a story. And There's a, a story. Each one of those models, yeah, has a story. Yeah, mm, yeah, I can get with that. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm, I'm with you though. Same thing. I was like, this looks a little clunky, but you know. Uh, then when I, someone someone else did the homework and I was like, you did some great homework and I can appreciate them. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was, uh, I, I posted up in our little chat, the Facebook chat we have going, uh, when the monkey magic guy got announced, <laughs> they find, they did it. I don't know if this is the jump the shark moment, but I, I think, I don't know if I called it on this podcast or it was just in a chat pre, pre-recording, but I'm like, guarantee you there's going to be a guy riding a riding a cloud there'll be there'll be a dude Those riding a cloud who'll go oh, oh, yeah. Lord, close two fingers are amazing They're they good. yeah okay yeah i'm i'm down the yeah the good ones the the sword master models beautiful <laughs> very very gorgeous they actually the, the whole aesthetic is is beautiful the the twins yeah the ones that the, the one twins like yep. balancing on the tip of the other one's armor they're both gorgeous like yeah I wish yeah, those were absolutely. two separate models. Uh, you probably can do that easy enough. Oh, yeah. There's right. got to be some I... nice, there's got to be some significant uh, pin in point for that toe tip into that point. Otherwise, that is just going to be Mr. Sir Breaks a lot. <laughs> I mean, they, they, I'm impressed with like even the Swordmaster. I know they're not called Swordmasters, but we know us relics uh, know that they are Swordmasters. <laughs> for a second, I'm like, those look really similar to Swordmasters. I mean, those look like almost like they just redesigned the Swordmasters um, mm. for today's age. And then I was like, wait a second, I don't mind. Yeah. And uh, did you see the ballista? Yeah. Do you remember, mm. you remember the old ballista? It would just be like a ballista with a dude standing behind it on a square. And there was so much square unfilled, oh, yeah. you know? Like it was just Man. like, I was... I mean, you're talking to a dark elf player from fantasy, right? So, like, <laughs> yeah, I had I had an army of ballistas supported of by some dudes with crossbows. Yeah. Um, so it was cool to see the return, like, of like the, you did. The, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean that, how that much, was a thing. But how much more fleshed out is that model now? Is the huge oh, it's like it's a huge quiver. The guy's got a huge quiver of arrows. Like it's an actual quiver, not like a, just a rack of spears. He's got a quiver. It's hilarious. Someone is um, also, I think, on Twitter or maybe on Instagram had made a comparison to the freedom that that the designers seem to have with Sigmar. Mm. That is, I mean, it's it seems like they have more freedom than they do on the 40k side. Well, you think about it, like what was one of the gifts that G Dub gave themselves when they kind of remade the game like you know let the old world end the old world was tied to a lot of tropes goblins goblins orcs orcs chaos somewhat yeah, traditional elves the, yeah exactly it was somewhat tied to tropes and Tol- now Tolkien, they've gotten Tolkien elves. it was all go. You know. yeah yeah and now they've let them all go and they can just do what they want so they've got a very almost like the last airbender oriental mythology feel to the lumineth realm lords oh, i dig it i'm really interested to see what the the, the dark elf range looks like um yeah, but I, I like the breaking. I like the breaking of tropes, like the specific. Bre- I, I, mean, I know I've mentioned that on this show. You know, instead of having under the ground dwarves, we've got 
Sky Dwarves, <laughs> you know, instead <laughs> well, of, instead of um, you know, on the on, sea man. elves. Ste- Steampunk the sea elves. was hot for a little while. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I still, I, I think people still like that aesthetic. Um, and I think that the other side of the dwarves aesthetic with the slayers and everything, the lava, lava slayers mm-hmm. was kind of played into as well. And so I think the dwarves really got away with, with best of both worlds to a certain yeah. extent. And I'm sorry, I wasn't being critical at all. I was praising G-Dub <laughs> for their willingness to break away from tropes. I thought, I think it's an incredible thing. No, it is. Really- and, I, and I agree with that. I didn't really, I mean, I, I knew that they wanted to reinvent what their style of high fantasy was mm-hmm. and that's exactly what they've done but they're continuing to push it and these realm lords i, I think are an extension of that is like it is they yeah. are really showing that they they will do whatever they want to do in their own world kind of thing which is you know where you know look everything was borrowed from tolkien in the beginning like elves became play played characters because of tolkien you know they were yeah. no longer just the things that stole your babies in the night or whatever after that and everything for a hundred years was some type of variation of that and then gw i mean courage uh dumb luck i mean i don't know right but tore it all down and it bred or building up something unique to their fantasy world which is amazing yeah i agree and i love that it's got well so right now we have i guess the sigma um sigmarites being the kind of envisionment of so it, it's very viking-esque you know there's a there's kind of a um reinvention of you know heroic souls into new forms it's very um valhalla feeling it's very nordic kind of feel to it even some of the armor armor options are quite have a nordic feel to them but uh and now we've got a kind of an oriental feel with um or you know um asian influenced realm lords there's a lot still to plumb there. Like we, I mean, we also do have the Nordic, of course, there's always the Nordic influenced um, or the Scandinavian influenced uh, Warriors of Chaos kinds of stuff. I like that they have a they have a counterpoint now too. Uh, really cool. The aesthetic, amazing. Can't get enough of it. In fact, I'm very very invested in seeing which aesthetics come next and what they choose to use. I mean, I look at those realm lords almost every day. Like, do I need these in my life? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm well, I'm hoping that now that we've got like a uh, what's what is it called? Is it Rus? Like the what I'm what I'm defining as that that um, vampire ogre? It's like a Rus influence. Um, I'm not quite sure what the correct term would be. I know what you're talking about. I mean, like kind of like the Eastern european type eastern european well, i mean yeah. the whole whole that whole area that really they're pulling from because i mean even you look at the you know the the bad the big bad um vampire guy that's running it you know i mean he's it's it's all that kind of keyslive uh aesthetic from the fantasy yeah. area and so the yeah the the thing with the ogre is that it it's you know so if you ever i i used to have an ogre army and if you look Me at too. the man eaters uh right so like the man eaters were the 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 mercenary ogres that kind of wore mm. different attire and so this guy plays right into it where he's wearing like armor oh, that yeah, i, I assume those. he's kind of got along the way right yeah. and yeah because he does have that ruse kind of with the helmet but at the same time like you look at his shoulder plate and everything and of course he's got like the ogre the traditional ogre punching fist thing uh punching blade but the the shoulder plate he's got still has kind of a more definitely plays more into this ogre aesthetic the you know that they're further east that they're coming almost from like the the uh the the mongolian or the yeah the, the that, Genghis Khan that, kind of war deal to it that yeah. like trying to stop an arrow riding on the back of a horse type exactly armor to exactly. it exactly yeah. he doesn't have the belly plate but i think that that kind of plays into the again the man eater aspect we're well, talking Instead, about his shoulders though huge, i mean that that's yeah, a his huge shoulder deal that's yeah. a sculpted face like that's a that's a demon mask or whatever yeah 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 yep. yep. exactly the, and and all these humans all these human characters like i don't know what uh what's her face is with the big collar and the staff uh but she looks amazing like they these are just mm-hmm. begging to be in, inquisitorial red new or Stuff. Oh yeah, no. These are going to be amazing. Some of this stuff. I mean, even the Glario Van Alten looks a lot kind of. I mean, look look at that as whether a rogue trader or even a imperial guard commander. I mean, mm-hmm. some of this stuff is just fantastic across the board. Look at yeah. Amelda Braskov, whether that's an inquisitor or even. I mean, which one is that? Of, is that the is that big uh, collar lady? Uh, Amelda Braskov is the um, vampire slayer. She's Sigmarite. She's got the like hawk hawk on her shoulder piece. So the griffin. It's probably a griffin given this era. Yeah. But she's like holding the sword upright, man. Like that's that's almost like a Castell and Crow stance from Grey mm-hmm. Knights. Well, a lot of people look at, like you know. Sis is a battle, blessed blade, a blade of admonition. Um, oh yeah, man! Wow, yeah. Canoness, phenomenal sculpt. True. This is a like they're 
pulling out all the stops. I like it. Um, this is one of those things where the models, I mean, they, they, they kind of speak for themselves. So even if you're not a painter, you just want to play the game. You know, this is, you're still going to play, be playing with some really cool pieces. And that goes a long way with the board game. Hmm. Even the, I mean, uh, the, yeah. the villains, I know we kind of harshed on the zombies a bit, but go and look, look for those stories. I mean, like you can see, um, yeah, like a, a, like one of them is wearing a necklace and then there's a, a very similar necklace h- hanging on the gravestone kind of thing. And there's there's those type of similarities or, or links between all of them. It's kind of weird that like the coolest skeletons we've ever seen almost seem like basic in the rest of the, the kits. Well, yeah, you don't need you don't need much to make a good skelly, do you? Well, I'm saying these are really amazing skeletons and rat swarms and things like mm-hmm. that. Like it's it's almost going to get lost in uh, in these things. But yeah, this is yeah, this is cool. And I like the you know the vampires the where they're the, like, I think we touched on this a bit or no, it was when they did that underworlds thing. Like we had, we got when they yep. did the preview of the unders were underworlds. Like the the guy the 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 vamp that looked a little bit on the, like the strigoi side of things. Like was the underfed one, the one that was more ravenous. And we see those uh, those types of characters in this as well with the with the mm. ones like the the two uh, female vampires. Mm. So I think they're female mm-hmm. vampires. Some something along yeah something uh, along those lines. Yeah. This is going to be amazing. I think so. But yeah, there's also, there's a, did you guys ever play Silent Hill? The video oh, yeah. game? Yeah. I, I didn't. I, oh, I, I was didn't. like, I was like 12 or 13, scared the absolute, yeah, you, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, and man, there's quite a, just, like, I'm looking at this uh, Gore Slav, the, the Gravekeeper. He's got a very, uh, like, triangle. Pyramid head? head? Pyramid head oh, and yeah. going on there. Oh, which man. Which brings does. up all sorts of Ghiblis for me. That is a chaos sorcerer waiting to happen. I mean, I'm telling you, these... Like, yeah, for sure. Look, get these games, play them, uh, harvest the figures for your personal armies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think just about every single... Every single... Yeah, I, I think every single Agents of Defiance, every single one of the character models, you could find a reason to play them in 40k. Um, the Yeah, all of them. Yeah, even even um, Quilath, Qu- uh, Quilathus, the Exile, the... Um, the dark, sorry, the older one or the wood elf would look fantastic as a, a harlequin. Look phenomenal as a harlequin. Oh, nice, nice. So let's take a break. Uh, we'll come back. We'll chat some 40k stuff if you like. See you in a minute. <laughs> FTN is brought to you by Discount Games Inc. Please visit them at www.discountgamesinc.com, and don't forget to ask Jay about ways to save even more on your hobby projects. Hey, we are back. I still got Adam and Red here. What up? Welcome back after that break. Dark freaking Elder. Oh, oh th- did we know they're coming up next for sure? I no, mean, we don't. Like I, I thought don't. they would have been announced already, but I'm happy they have. I'm happy they have it. I'm not happy for Dark Elder players that they haven't. But yeah, I'm happy that 40k is getting a break. I mean, the community's uh, dropped a couple things here or there, right? We've seen they dropped the new splinter cannon. They've mm-hmm. dropped the uh, they dropped they showed the the the, the warriors, right? And so they, they dropped that, but they didn't say anything else. And so well, like supply yeah. chains have taken a beating over here in the US recently. You know, with sure. with everything and then we had this this bizarre weather come through. Normally it hits Georgia, but it hit like everywhere in the south but Georgia. Hilarious. So, yeah. So if anybody's out there still struggling with power or weather issues, you'll stay safe out there. Mm. Because uh, it was it was bad oh, for you, some folks. Yeah. Oh, you meant the, like the Arctic, whatever it was that he went all the way down through Texas. Yeah. 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 It's basically that's, like yeah, cut, that's cut a path from Texas to mm. New York with two feet of snow or whatever. Yeah, that's insane. I mean, I, I it, a lot of people out there just weren't expecting it, and we've actually you know been in, in Georgia before where we've been hit by we just weren't prepared. You know, it didn't didn't know it was ever going to get that bad. So I, you know, I feel for folks that had to deal with that. Nope, everything is better. Yeah, totally. So anyway, what I'm saying is, you know, like a death card got delayed. There's you know been some some word about like you know White Dwarf from Pry Nexus and stuff being delayed. So you know we we don't know when we're going to see the Dark Eldar, but that's kind of how the Jakari work, don't you? They come out of nowhere. <laughs> when you're least expecting it. <laughs> yeah, I'm and I'm super excited for this book. Uh, mostly, most sorry, I don't know how you guys feel about Dark Eldar, but they're my, the favorite army that I I don't play. They're my favorite army that I don't play. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, no, that uh, makes I don't sense. play. The, uh, they don't, I don't play them for a couple of very specific reasons. First one being I'm enormously clumsy and don't deserve to have nice things because of it. Um, and I just think like I'll, I'll take that army to like a tournament once and then it'll, it'll come home in a shambles and I'll never have the, <laughs> I'll be perpetually disappointed in myself and my own thick, clumsy fingers. Every raider in Venom multiple times. Exactly. I would love to own a Tantalus. I can't be, I can't be like responsible for a Tantalus. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. It's a, it's uh, a but, pretty solid model, but it's got that sail on it. Uh, if it was plastic... 
I'd be a lot more confident. The, the fact that it's resin, I'm just like, oh. And it's a large model. You have to have a, you have to be incredibly confident in your display board to mm. want to put that model on it. But it's so good looking. Like, oh. It is. And, and it's actually been, there's been periods of time when it's been very glorious on the table. It's very good right now. Yeah, you think it's so? It's very, very strong right now. Yeah. I think I think it's possibly one of their, be- their better units. Because of uh, the open what, top stuff or, or what it can do by itself? Yeah. I, open topped it's got a hellacious amount of firepower i can bring it up for you guys right now um but the reason kind of the reason i'm really excited about the dark elder codex is because i think we've got three very good examples of g-dub demonstrating that they know how to do slow and smashy armies like slow and durable armies i'm, I'm wanting to see what their direction is like for writing a ninth edition codex for something is that is fast and deadly so mm-hmm. you know um my example was, I think me and Rob were talking about this before, off, off, off screen. Necrons, a, a, a good portion, probably the best portion of Dark Angels and Death Guard are a slow, ponderous, unstoppable force. I want to see how they do liquid, how they do a liquid force, something that's supposed to be quick and agile. I'm really interested to see what they pull out for it. And Red, you said you had some ideas. Oh, man. So, well, and, you know, we've seen a couple things outside of what was shown by the Warhammer community. There's been a couple leaks here or there. Uh, and, and purely just the, you know, Drazar and, and we saw some of the weapon loadouts. Um, I don't think that there was anything majorly drastic outside of we just saw Drazar's stat profile, right? And his Drazar weapon, we didn't really see. Yeah, mm-hmm. we, we didn't really see anything else. We didn't see his rules. So we don't know if he can still fight twice. We don't know if he gives everyone you know, all the, the, the uh, incubi around him uh, plus one to wound or anything. But we do know that he deals three damage. And that's huge. Um, that's, mm. that's massive. And, uh, I can't remember if he had four or five attacks, you know, it's in that realm, but I mean, he's, he's going to be strength six, uh, when you add in his weapon and it's AP minus three and then it's three damage. And so you're talking, I mean, that's a, that's a Gravis armor killer to a certain extent. Well, well I was going to mention, you know, with, with death guard, I mean, do you think three damage is going to be the new chase? Like if you can, you can, oh, get yeah. it, you just stop everything and do it i mean yeah i i I think it's i think it's really big because a lot of people were are paying premiums for the two damage you know whether it's power fist or whatnot and i think you saw a shift especially with the release of death guard that people have just consigned themselves to to the one damage aspect and that's where you see a lot of these these uh lightning claws coming out because i mean you know you're only going to do one damage anyways you might as well get the reroll wounds versus power fist for example um and and so there's a lot to that i think yeah i agree um, as for the tantalus it's 18 wounds a toughness seven six attacks three plus armor save movement 16 auto advances 12 so you know every time you want to go fast you just go 28 inches um it's open topped with 15 models in so 16 models inside being able to shoot out of it and um it uh when it finishes the charge move you roll a d6 for each enemy unit within um engagement range and a four plus x over d3 mortal wounds you've seen the footprint of this thing yeah it's like it's a little <laughs> bit i think it's a little bit wider than a bane blade but not quite as long you can get a lot of things in engagement range just like i, I think it's d3, as d3. long and not quite as wide i think it's other i think it's the okay, other way around, other way around so. i mean i could be wrong uh, uh, but it, i just re- i mean it is it, it's i mean it's like a shoebox yeah it's huge mm. um an elegant shoebox pulse- with a sail <laughs> yeah it's got two pulse disintegrators which are range 36 assault six so you can go 28 inches and still shoot these things if you want um strength eight minus three two damage so 12 shots of that profile uh which is a very good profile in the game at the moment yeah, so I just no, think, I, mean, I just think it's they're crazy good, man. What are you yeah. putting in it? Right, like it depends. There's a lot of options. I like I like a lot of things inside it actually. Like you could just put grotesques in it. They take up a space of two, so you could have a unit of eight grotesques or six or seven grotesques in a couple of characters. Um, I like putting a lot of MSU things inside of it, mm-hmm. like the idea of pulling like a, a fleshed out court of the archon in there and then just jumping them out all over the table to get to get your points, score objectives, and then maybe having one or two like killer units inside it. Um, so the idea would have like two five mans, maybe of incubi, uh, depending on how they rock out, mm-hmm. or one unit of nine and Drizar, and then just like a couple of Urgles, a couple of the mains, a couple of Slith or whatever, um, just to go and do a lot of actions and uh, get a lot of things done. Because first turn, you just move and advance this guy into somebody's face and like, here's your one turn. Um, uh, I, I will in my head, uh, and uh, probably somebody was thinking the same thing. You, did they just say Urgles and Slith? And you're like actions, like, oh yeah, all right, yep, I'm be- I'm back mm-hmm. on board, I'm on. <laughs> Action action monkeys. <laughs> they they have some of the best act they have some of the best action monkeys um you can get for the points. Like That's they're actually right. yeah. crazy, crazy yeah. good value. Stuff to think about. I mean it, it's it's not a conventional force, right? It's not like what you typically see. It's just not. 
And so mm-hmm. you got to think about some of the things that they can do that are unconventional that they can take advantage of. And exactly it. Like, I mean, you, you're going to waste that time taking out those. You got to hunt down those ergols as they do those actions. You know what I mean? You've got to be able to get around whatever piece of terrain that they're slinking through. You or get whatever. around that tantalus. That's <laughs> yeah, whatever. You know, you, I mean, in my case, you got to you got to chew through the whether it's the twenty grotesques or the the thirty incubi or or what have you that I want to throw in front of you. Um, I, I, I tell you, from when I first started playing them, I really enjoyed, especially with the new aesthetic as it came out. Um, I, I really enjoy the Raiders. I like the idea of like 10 warriors and Raiders driving around with, I, I'm interested to see what splinter racks do. If there's any changes to that, I, I, it's not the best, the most resilient thing or anything, but I, I, I think it's kind of funny. I really like the, the look of it, the whole concept. No, that's fair. I, I like it as well. I like the flotilla kind of, yeah, mode of warfare. I think it's exciting. Well, being everywhere with, I mean, decent guns. Well, we just had a prime example of um, how Dark Elder can still be playable without a codex in Ninth Edition. I mean, we had the, the Las Vegas and Open, and out of nowhere, like a mono Dark Elder army almost went the distance. Hey, any given Sunday, you know, I guess. Fuck the world. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pretty, so, pretty impressive, really. Yeah, but they have, I mean, you mentioned they got the tools. I mean, they can be different places. There's, um, I mean, you know, there's something to be said for matchups matchup dependent and you know player player skill of course you know we saw that play out um almost in a textbook example over the course of that event um but they they have a lot of the the things some cheap and mobile units which to be places to do things and then you know with just a little bit of luck gets their their guns could make a difference yeah for sure and um they i think you hit the nail on the head they have this ridiculous propensity to just get points to just continue over a five turn game just keep scoring just keep getting points regardless of damage taken or whatnot um and they still have some very good they still have some very underrated guns in the current environment i think especially when the splinter cannons and stuff get their shifts but man i'm a huge fan of shredders like, oh, man. Mm-hmm. huge fan of shredders i think shredders in the current environment are phenomenal profile yes strength six minus one reals to win against infantry um amazing yes get yeah. take as many of them as you can Hundred percent. I mean, right now, you know, we're just we're speculating on what uh, may may come, but you know, we're, what we're talking about is is weapons and stuff that do really well with what you see right now, and you know, what you see is things with higher wounds or things with damage reductions or you know, like heavy intercessors are going to be on the table soon. They're yep. no joke. No, they're not. That toughness yeah. five, three wounds. You want about talking about something that's been delayed? Wow, wow, what a delay on those guys. <laughs> sure. Yeah, well, sure. sure, but I mean, you know, but they are. I mean, once once they get start getting in people's hands, you know, and we know some armies can take advantage of them. Like Death Watch, I think, will mm, some heavy yeah, intercessors. I think there are several marine varieties that could benefit from from de- from heavy intercessors. So we're going to see them, and that that's a toughness five, three wound model that could easily get a mm. a, a benefit to save. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you look, man, you not wrong at all it's i've got i've even got a couple of lists in my battle scribe with uh heavy intercessors and asriel like just waiting for the heavy intercessors to come out so asriel can give him a full plus invuln and we'll see if they're any good uh but yeah it's interesting how delayed that one has gotten if it has even been delayed maybe it's not maybe this is always the plan oh who knows well it's not supposed to be out until uh i mean at least coming out in prior nexus or whatever uh pretty soon but i'm saying that uh that's that is a unit that people have you know, unless they proxied some things up, hey, you have not seen them in in matched play, organized play events. Mm, it's true; we, they're an unknown quantity still. That's you know, very, very. But true. you know, I think that's it's still leaning towards more. I mean, like heck, Dark Angel Terminators. You know, they're leaning towards things with high saves and more than two wounds. And so, what's mm. the best way of dealing with that? Do do we think Dark Elder are going to have the tools? Yeah, look, I I think they will. They'll, they'll be surgical. I mean, I mean, so th- this is my fear for Dark Elder uh, is that they'll just seem like either a a far better or slightly worse version of Harlequins. And that's kind of what I don't want. I, but I'm not quite sure what you do to make oh, them man. stand out. Well, right now they've got those different modes of play, you know, with the with the mm. covens and the the cults and all that stuff. Sure. I mean, that's yeah. You know, it, 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 are the witches going to be enough? You know, are they in close combat? Mm. Are the witches going to be enough to hang with, um, you know, the average Blight combat? Lord Terminators. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Blight, Lord, Blight Lord Terminators and Deathwing Terminators, Deathwing Knights, right? Like, are you going to be able to to go in there and and hold your ground? Let's say that it, it's the the point of it is for the the witches to have the initiative, right? So if in the best circumstance, if a witch 
unit charges that kind of unit, are they going to be capable of throwing down to whatever extent? And so, like, there's a lot to weigh out in that. I mean, so looking at this shift in uh, the 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 venom cannons or the the you know the the um, not venom cannons, but the uh, splinter cannons. And splinter cannons. Excuse me. Thank you. Yeah. Tiered, so tiered is also you're right. I know. I made that jump. <laughs> they do, but yeah, exactly. So, but I mean, you you put splinter cannons across all of your venoms, and is it is it appropriate? Like, is that enough? Is it? I mean, against Death Guard, it's really I don't know. And and the next part being is what do disintegrators look like? Yeah, you know, when you can put three of those on the heavier platform. I'm trying to remember the the Ravager. When you put it on the Ravager and you have three of them, how is that? Because we saw, we know what Dark Lances do according to the leak. Uh, apparently, I mean, strength eight, AP minus four, three damage plus D3. I mean, that's not mm, bad. But, that's um, not bad at all. It's not, right? That's not bad at all. But what are what are disintegrators? What do those do? I mean, are they still strength five, uh, AP minus two or three? I can't remember off the top of my head right now. But I know they were two damage, which makes them just not as good because of the, the death guard threat that's out there and just automatically reducing all that down to one. It's just not what you want. So like if you are, are they stepped up or is, is there something in the, the dark elder codex that allows you to step them up? Um, well, uh, yeah. To, to not take us on a, a tangent, but we talk about these juggernaut units, units that um, like just on paper outmatch anything that you might've brought on paper. And right. you know, I'll go back to this a lot, but there are terrain rules that, may help you if you know to assign them to some of the things on your table and then True. and then once they're there take advantage of them uh like defensible uh, so there's a couple of exactly right exactly right i would love to see like booby traps become more of a thing like trapping you know trapping people in terrain pieces or having movement shenanigans associated with different terrain things or becoming entrenched and getting i don't know better saves or attributing keywords to to terrain because i think terrain was the element we all missed the most about eighth edition like terrain being a significant factor yeah and now that it's here i wanted to go to like its full potential <laughs> baby steps well i don't even know but i don't yeah. even know that it's not i mean i think that you know this is I mean, again, as as someone who I know, I'm down games of 40k. You know, I, so when I'm I'm like now when I play, I'm like so eager to play that I don't know that I go over every piece of terrain and label it and mark it like you know we should when we're trying to play mm-hmm. for every bit of efficiency. But this defensible thing, uh, it's like the old old time where if you were standing in cover and you were charged, you went first. You know, kind of thing. Yeah. You know, this is bringing back that was a tactic that you could do. Like I, I back in the old days when I would just get absolutely mauled by demonettes. I mean, I played this guy. All he did was roll sixes. So it didn't matter. Like, oh, so you just you just roll sixes against me. That's that's what's going on. He would. He would. That's what he would do. All legit. It's a technique. Would, that was just what he... I'm playing Paul. I'm going to be rolling all those sixes. So I'd constantly just pick my models up. So what did I do? I learned if I'm playing this guy, I just stand in the middle of the terrain. And I don't move until he comes in there. <laughs> that's so, so good. I at least get to swing. But uh, with uh, things like defensible uh, is that you get the hold steady or the set to defend rule. Now, we've seen some things that allow you to um, circumvent those rules. But if you're, if you're as a, for instance, the, the hold steady, you get to fire your overwatch uh, and hit on a five plus instead of a six plus, doubling your, your odds of hitting. So if you're shooting, yeah. that's what you want to do. Mm. Um, and then if you're set to defend, you had one to your hit rolls the next fight phase. You know, so these, these right. are, again, things that, that even if you are lacking some of that, you know, we talk about palling banshees, <laughs> that how they just need a lot of help. Uh, maybe them adding one to their hit rolls might help. I don't know. Certainly better than not doing it. Yeah, well, that's that's the thing. Like the metrics that are being leveraged at the moment is all durability stuff. The speed stuff really needs to come. I don't know. It needs to, that envelope needs to be pushed. Yeah. As in, how fast do you need to be to make up for not being durable? And that's what you want to see. You um, want to see how they do it in this edition. Yeah, exactly. I want to see. Yeah, I exactly want to see what their plan is for this edition for armies like that because there is a lot of armies like that. Part of the Raven Raven Wing stuff. Sorry, Raven Guard, Raven Wing. Too many ravens, too many deaths. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's the two, just two, two words that just plague me. Um, but you know, all the Eldar essentially play to this um, swift and deadly aesthetic. Tau can play. Tau were part of that aesthetic for quite a while, especially in that little transition period where no one got to play the game, but they got their psychic awakening, and we're very good with like this MSU quick ghost kill and crisis suit list. Um, as also, Tyranids play a very good fast and deadly. We all remember. The Kraken Steelers, yeah? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yuck. 
I'm still That's a little uh, shell shocked from that. Oh, uh, you didn't you didn't deploy exactly perfectly. Oh, sorry, mate, you lost. <laughs> yeah, rough. As someone who has rough, picked rough, up rough. a lot of models in their day, I don't I don't do that every now. And then. <laughs> yeah, well, I was playing guard at the time, and I was like, oh, how many guardsmen do I need to give you to let you kill in order to not lose? All of them was the answer. Yeah. Indeed. So, but, 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 yeah, but I was exciting. actually going to be my counterpoint exciting. to you was the the Raven Guard is it, it's, it's the same thing you did. Yeah. Same. The Raven Wing is that <laughs> they are, I think, pretty fast and deadly. But they're also, mm-hmm. but they're also on the Marine frame, and that's a big difference. Yeah, they've they've got a great leverage point for already starting like semi durable. Yeah. Whereas you know an Eldar Guardian is not starting with any durability. But I like how it's pushed to where they can get places and do things instead of just like there was a you know in in additions past there's been a thing where you, you kind of extend yourself and then you're just kind of hanging out there like yeah it, it has to, it's your hell mary play and it has to work because you can't do anything else mm-hmm. but now there's there you can you can be fast and then do something else maybe the penalty but still get to do it which is uh, i think a step in the right direction and maybe we see that carry over to mm-hmm. the Drakari. yeah i agree and also i think the g-dub's doing a really great thing at the moment where they're stripping out all the the combos and like do your head in levels of synergy needed to play some of these things at their best. What the units that come to mind are things like Eldar Guardians. I've lost Bane Blades to Eldar Guardians, like from full health to dead from Eldar Guardians. Mm, um, I brought down a knight because, in close yeah. combat with three guardians. <laughs> that's, that's an aberration. I'm talking, they only had one wound left, but you know, what do you do? You got to yeah. well, so charge in. Well, so these these in. these twenty guardians were likely to kill my my bane blade and they did you know and so that that <laughs> like is ridiculous that you could put enough stuff on them that they were likely to do it that's something that gw is turning away from they're turning away from gotchas they're turning away from having like a nausea level of combos onto a single unit and they're doing stuff like what we're seeing them do with like death watch and so uh, death, death guard, guard and dark angels like you look at a dark angels terminator yeah that takes a storm shield. It doesn't actually need any other applicable buffs apart from the, an apothecary to make it as durable as it's ever going to be, mm-hmm. as it's ever going to need to be as well. So I would like that with, I, I want to see what that looks like for things like Eldar, when you take away all the combos and all the crazy synergies you used to be able to do and just start trying to pack them in to their data sheets, so to speak. Yeah. Well, let's cross our fingers for Howling Banshees. <laughs> Pull one out for Howling Banshees. <laughs> but, uh, stuff the Banshees. Striking Scorpions has always been my favorite. No, the Striking I mean, Scorpions are cool. Like they, they are actually my favorite too, because I, I like to revamp as well. Across that whole range you know oh. i mean striking scorpions the howling banshees the new ones look good good jane czar looks good the striking scorpions could use a revamp right oh they, they're still working off those uh fine yeah. cast but i mean uh from when they got turned yeah. into you know like the, the what they are now they actually they had a revision from the metal to the fine cast and, I, and that's i guess same with the banshees but that's been a while you're right it's been a yeah. it's been a long well, while at this point well does anything from the dark elder range actually need new models apart from the incubi now well, the incubator had already been done, and they're phenomenal. So but they the already they still just has that one sculpt, though, doesn't it? Yeah, perfect. it does. They need, perfect they need, goal. yeah, they absolutely yeah. the perfect sculpt. Yeah, right. They, it they, is cool. It is. It's not bad, and it's actually pretty easy to mod. But uh, they they should have a kit for sure. There mm. should have been a kit for them. But they're a pretty fleshed out range. I mean, the, the, and they do. They think they they capture that that modern style very well. Like I like the witch kits a lot. Uh, I, I mean, like the warriors. it's. it's it's easy to say that they're fleshed out range when they took out so many others. You know, they, they killed all those characters off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you only have to, you only have to, I guess, make as many models as you put in the book. So if you get rid of the models that you had in the book previously, but I guess that I'm makes telling sense. the the core, the vehicles, the planes, the homunculi, they all, they all look cool. They have do. Guys, they all look good. You, yeah. Have you guys looked at a scourge model recently? Uh, all the time because they're amazing. Oh they're... my god! Yeah, I was about to say I don't think I ever properly looked at a scourge model until like last week. Yeah, they're Mandrake, some of the best uh, looking models. Yeah. So I know how good Mandrakes are. Mandrakes okay. are actually one of my favorite sculpts of all time. I yeah. I don't know why, but they are phenomenally. The, I the love scourge them. are they're, they're like a, a kit basher's dream. They come with lots oh, of dude. cool weapons and neat bits and stuff. Yeah, I was playing. I was planning an army with. Uh, I was writing a list with a mate for a teams event, and we're talking about you know the scourges with the, the shredders, which is why I think they're the, the, the hottest thing right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was uh, looking at the model, I'm like, man, I have I've never actually given these guys their due. They have possibly the best wings of any of any model that I've ever seen. Yeah, their wings are gorgeous. Even the and they've got bat ones and feathered ones, and they're both freaking amazing. Completely agree with you, and and the fact that you can like they they really are a a 
a Swiss army knife. You can kit them out to do whatever you need them to do or want them to do on the table. But as of right now, they don't, they don't benefit from all the rules. They're kind of out there in their own Island. Right. I mean, I, I could be wrong. No, no, that, I mean, it's, it's, they are. And so that's the problem is that, I mean, like incubi, uh, mandrakes and scourges. And it, well, and a lot of those that, that it's like, they, there's all these affiliations going around in the dark Eldar, but you, there's not a ton of synergy and it kind of makes it painful because, uh, especially given what GW has. I mean, that there's just not synergy associated with it. And so you'd almost think that they need to be good enough to be standalone models, that they don't require the synergy because so much of other armies, you know, Space Marines, for example, rely entirely upon that synergy to just min-max all of mm. their effectiveness. Yeah, too yeah. true. And, and, and suppose that's been the issue. They do have to kind of rewrite how Dark Eldar function because there isn't any cross cross uh, in, internal synergy like you just said like cabal can't cabal guys can't benefit which court guys you can't benefit any coven stuff and vice versa um which makes it really awkward to build detachments right now hence they had to give the the raiding force thing the three patrols to for, and you get all your cp if you take the three patrols because i had to change that because it's very counterintuitive like if you were just if i told you you have to make a dark eldar army and everyone coming to this event yeah you you, you Take whatever army you want, but you can only take a single battalion or brigade. Dark Elder players would be up in arms being like, that's not how our book works. And they'd be absolutely right. <laughs> well, I don't want to get too far in the realm of speculation because we just we just don't know. Uh, but I, I, I think sure, that, sure. you know, the worst comes, we've seen, you know, through through things on the internet, like upgrades to weapons, and that's a step in the right direction. And we can kind of even go for, so far as to speculate what the craft worlds may eventually look like if the Dark Lance, because the Dark Lances and the Bright Lances have always been kind of impaired. Yep, spot on. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm continual, going to continue to be excited for these types of things. But yeah, I'm with you. I'm kind of waiting in anticipation to see what what does the what what is the what does the glass cannon look like in this edition? Mm. Mm. And what comes up? What comes after this? So we've had a we've had a cheeky reveal, like you know. We've been told there's a campaign book coming, yeah? And it's going to have Knights, Admech, and a, and a couple of other things in it. Um, yep. Is that directly after this? Do we have more codexes in the work? I mean, it's we're actually in a, a bit of a dark spot where we actually have no idea what's coming after Dark Elder. And we actually don't even know when Dark Elder is dropping, to be honest. No. I mean, you have to imagine the stuff is coming soon, right? I mean, what, But I think, yeah. well, look, we just kind of be patient. I mean, as far as, That's I mean, I, we were kind of talking about like shipping delays and supply chain delays. I mean, this kind of stuff is is widespread. I think we're, I don't want to say we're lucky to continue to get the previews that we do. I'm kind of content to just kind of drool over the model picks at this point. Fair yeah, look, I'm, I'm grateful for, yeah, to having, for having what we have. We could have easily, G-Dub, just been like, all right, shut it all down. Now, we're saving as many pennies as we can. I'm coming from the haves category over here because my Blood Angel Codex is... is <laughs> 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 oh, and yeah, I've I'm, got a backlog of models to paint. That's uh, but we probably all I'm, share that part. Yeah, I'm in the same. I'm in the same boat. I've got so much Dark Angels to do, and that codex is phenomenal. So okay, so that's. I think this is a question. So the, we can close the show out with this. Is like, what did you? What have you changed? What kits did you raid? Did you pull any arms off of anything? Like, what are you doing to get your Dark Angels Ninth Edition ready? I am so. I I got in a, in a trade. I've got something like twenty six Black Knights. Un, like a semi-built black knights and for like every eighth or ninth of them i'm cracking off the the the, the plasma talent and putting a grenade launcher on it and that is not not a thing i ever thought i'd be doing but apart from that i think i am converting a couple of my oh sorry i need a i need a samuel conversion which i'm still looking looking for a source of and i'm looking at whether um i need to convert some of my um nephilim jet flights into dark talents mm. Is that an easy swap? I mean, do you have it set up that way, or are you just gonna get like get get brutal with the nose? I've got all the bits. Uh, essentially, I just need to put the. So the only difference between the nephilim, the nephilim and the the dark talent is that that you got a different gun, different guns in the front, and yeah. um, you've got the missiles instead of the the hurricanes, and then you just got a top fin on the top, which I don't think anyone would actually care about if I no. didn't have the forget top that fin. fin. Yeah, forget the fin. Uh, especially is like I've got a nice red racing stripe down the middle of my guys, and I, the the fin would make it look awkward. But uh, yeah, that's what I'm looking into at the moment. All right. I mean, how much? Is also, he... actually, sorry. Also, I had to make a bunch of lightning claw terminators, which I never had any of before. It was all Thunderhammer, Storm Shields, Dark Knights, and Shooty Terminators. Did you already had the bits waiting for this day, gleefully waiting for this day, or did you, you have to <laughs> harvest the, um, your friends? No, no, no. I've got plenty. Yeah, I didn't have to harvest anything. <laughs> well stocked. I know. We we have a condition. Mm. The only cure for that is more lightning claws. It's true. No, that's that's good, man. So, how long do you think it's going to take you to get ready, like painted? Ah, uh, ready. ready. 
I finished I finished five termies last night. I finished my blade guard. I actually I converted up. I built and converted five blade guard, which I'm really I really are. I'm so happy with how they came out. And what um, what did you use? Like so, push fit assault incessors from Indominus. Yep. Uh, Mark three um, Horus Heresy helmets. Power swords um, like uh, from the Black Knight kit. Yep. Because I had so many of them, I just everyone got a super crazy special power sword and shields from the Deathwing Terminators from um, Deathwing Knights. I had to. I picked up a, a new, a, a multi-part kit of the Blade Guard. I couldn't resist. Do it. Yeah, I, I still might get one squad. What the the idea behind these guys though is because they're like relatively new into the um into the Deathwing, they're not trusted that much. So you know, there's no you don't get any calls, you don't get any any robes or whatnot. You're just literally like you're a, you're a geared up assault intercessor, and that's exactly <laughs> what you're allowed to be for the next like 50 years until you prove your worth. That's the second level of secrets is you get your tabard. <laughs> you get your tabard. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. dude holding the banner though sold me. Like I could not get this. Uh, you know the guy with the um uh like with the flag over his sword. He's wiping the blood off with. The- oh, uh, that's a really gorgeous. good one. I was like, yeah. I gotta have that. I got and and just I assume. So I, I am. I'm looking forward to building up my bits collection of Primaris Marines to to do. You know, like we talked talked about just be able to to go and convert a, a chaplain or a, like i know i'm i'm like moments away from from creating a primary singularity priest not because one exists just because i want to own one and i've seen some kit bashes recently that look amazing it's a very fair call <laughs> yeah so i thought certainly there's some bits in here in this uh blade guard kit that uh that he's but I, i'm curious to assemble them to see what is spare or partially spare or whatever it's a good time good very time. good time all right well guys that that's gonna be our show good times yeah good no times look indeed. I'm I'm genuinely excited for Curse City. I am I'm, I'm going to get the magic stuff. I mean, let me I, let me try to think of a condition. No, I just want it. Like I I I want to own it. I want to play with them. That's like what I, I don't mind the crossover, but I also it's I also respect the fact that some people are like absolute purist and don't like the chocolate and the peanut butter or the peanut butter and the chocolate. Sure. That's the thing. So I can respect yeah, I res- it. Yeah, I respect it. If if it's not for you, it's not for you. I just don't think there's ever any excuse to tell someone it's not for them. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. Also, I'm not saying it's not saying it's happening. But I just think it's something we should be aware of. Well, this this is really at the core of it is something that will evoke these types of feelings across the board uh, for this type mm-hmm. of product because you got people that are very passionate about both sides of it, and then you got some people that that don't want to see that that mix, and then you got some people that just don't want other people to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know that I would like, I'm not asking for this, but if it exists, I think, I, I think I want to be a part of it, but we'll see. You know, we're just, we're looking at a news. We don't even, we haven't even seen any cards. We're just looking at words at this point. That's what I mean. I'm, I'm holding out judgment until I see what's actually produced. Most likely I'm pretty sure going to pick them up for the artwork just because yeah. I, I like artwork. Yeah. I'll tapity tap, send in Calgar. It's fine with me. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. Is that our lock-in? There's definitely going to be a Calgar card. It's no way. It's not Ultramarines. There's no way. It's not like mostly Ultramarines. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I expect yeah. to see all ten captains. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, folks, so, well, thanks for listening. Okay. Oh, sorry, you got some, Adam? Uh, there'll be, a, there's definitely going to be an Abaddon card as well. There'll be, a, there'll be a, a Kalgar, probably a Gilliman, and an Abaddon. No, there'll That's be a picture prediction. of Abaddon, and it'll just be Chaos Lord under it. <laughs> I'm kidding. That would not be backhanded. No, no. Hey, I mean, you played 40k Risk, right? Have you played that yet? <laughs> yeah, with War Boss. No. Yeah, yeah. It goes, it goes. I was joking about this earlier. There's, there's, there's Robo Gilliman, uh, Lord of McCrag, uh, Lord Regent of the Empire of the Imperium. You know, Primarch of the 13th Legion, Master of All Mankind, so on and so forth. There's Avadon the Despoiler, and then there's Warboss, and then there's Farseer, Farseer. and then there's Space Skeleton, and Bug, <laughs> That's amazing. and Fish. That's yep. incredible. That's pretty much how all the names go in Risk. <laughs> Yeah, wow. Well, that that won't happen. I, I ended on another Ultramarine rant. My bad. Sorry. <laughs> it can't. Yeah. We're not, it's not going to happen in, in Magic. Look, I just like I'm completely okay with. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. With we'll War see. Boss, you're okay with War Boss? I it's don't clearly know. a picture of Gazgul, but it's they just call him War Boss. <laughs> No, no, I'm not gonna. I'm not okay with that in risk. I don't think Magic is going to do that though, because like even their like if if you were to take look at the card game now, like even their commons and uncommons are you know there's names Fair. and story and, and narrative in that. Like this, even with the, the the way the sets have evolved, there is that that flavor to it that persists, and you can you know if you're just collecting a single set, buy into the story of that set and. Mm. 
And so it's it still exists. And I think it'll I think that'll exist in all of the things that they do. And especially in 40K. Like you can't have two juggernauts of the nerd industry who are you know high percent lore come together and not make something that's not cool lore wise. Doesn't doesn't pass the lore sniff test. Sure. But we'll reserve like we we've only looked at one news release. Plenty of more to come. We we eat with our eyes, remember that. So. That's right. All right. Well, gentlemen, uh, thanks for talking with me. Thanks everybody for listening. Please leave us some um, five-star reviews, comment. If you're, if you're new here, if you just found us, uh, leave some comments. We try to interact with folks uh, best we can. Hit us up on Facebook, on uh, Twitter, Instagram, so on and so forth. We'll see y'all next week. See ya. See ya. Make my day.